Hi, this is video number five on probability for actuarial exam one, also called exam P. You can see we're doing question nine in this video. Uh, I don't know if you noticed or not, but in video number four we did question eight, so we are not doing these problems necessarily directly in order, and in fact we might go backwards sometimes and do question six in a future video. Probably also not going to do every single sample question. I'm going to pick and choose to a certain degree. We're continuing with a Venn diagram problem in this video. I'm calling it a tricky Venn diagram problem because it involves a new concept called conditional probability, which is definitely kind of tricky. And once again, we'll first solve the problem as quick as possible, and that's the way you'll want to do it when you take the exam. Secondly, we'll take a step back and talk about using probability formulas uh, to solve the problem, in this case, the De Morgan Law and the General Addition Rule that we talked about in video number four, and also a new rule called the General Multiplication Rule. I'm not going to completely justify these things, we're just going to see that they work. Okay, and again, I'm introducing this idea of conditional probability, I'll talk about that. And at the end of the video, once again, we'll emphasize the importance of thinking in terms of areas with a Mathematica manipulate animation to help us understand what's going on here. So we have question 9 saying an insurance company examines its pool of auto insurance customers and gathers the following information. First of all, all customers insure at least one car. Nobody insures zero cars. They wouldn't really be a customer then. Secondly, 70% of the customers insure more than one car. Okay, two or more. Third, 20% of the customers insure a sports car. And fourth, this is the trickiest one. Listen carefully here. Of those customers who are already known to insure more than one car, 15% of them insure a sports car. So we're mixing the two ideas here. Just imagine that you've got a thousand customers here. 70% of them insure more than one car, 700. So that would mean 300 insure exactly one car. 20% of them insure a sports car. 20% of a thousand is 200. And then four of those customers who insure more than one car, of those 700, 15% of them insure a sports car. 15% of 700 is 105. Okay, if you think that way, think in terms of numbers, it helps you to start to get your mind around the problem. 15% of 700 is 105 would insure a sports car. But we don't know that we have exactly 1,000 customers. We, we have to work with these percentages instead. We want to calculate the probability that a randomly selected customer insures exactly one car, meaning not more than one car, and that that car is not a sports car. Okay? So draw your Venn diagram. You can imagine this to be a gym floor, and every, every one of your customers is standing in there. They're going to stand in this circle here. If they insure more than one car, I'll use an M for more than. To denote those people, they'll stand in this circle here if they insure a sports car. I'll label that with an S for sports car. That's not the sample space in this case, though. Okay. And once I've got that, then I've got these four different regions, four different non-overlapping disjoint regions, also called mutually exclusive. One, two, three, four, that I can label with letters to represent the probabilities of each of those different disjoint events. Being an M but not S, being an M and S, being an S but not M, and being in neither M nor S out there. Okay? Those would be the people who insure only one car and it's not a sports car would be these people. And in fact that's exactly what we're after here. They insure exactly one car and it's not a sports car. We're after the value of Z. That's the goal. Alright? Let's write down the given information in terms of equations. Uh, w plus X plus Y plus Z is all customers, all 100% of them, that's going to be 1. W plus X is those who st are standing inside circle M. That's 70%, that's going to be 0.7. X plus Y, that's the people who insure a sports car, that's 20% of the people. And now here again is the hardest part, the tricky part. <laughs> Of those customers who insure more than one car, of those people who are standing inside circle M, 15% of them insure a sports car. If we were again imagining that there's a thousand customers total, 700 would be standing inside M, 
15% of 700 is 105. 105 would be standing inside this intersection of M and S. 105 divided by 700 is 15%. Symbolically here, X divided by W plus X would be 15%. Now again, X and W are not numbers of people. They are probabilities. But that ratio would still hold. Okay. So now it's just a matter to solve this as quick as possible of solving the system of equations for z. The goal is to find z. The goal here is to find z. That'll be the probability of not being an M, not having more than one sports car that you're insuring, having exactly one, and it's not a sports car. Okay, not insuring more than one car, not having insuring a sports car. All right, um, it's not too hard to solve this. I think, again, the goal is to solve for z. If we could solve for w plus, we already know what w plus x is, 0.7. If we know y, we could then solve for z with this first equation. Um, I think it'll be good to solve for x itself because that'll help us solve for y. So we can take this equation and plug it in right down there to get that x over 0.7 is 0.15. So x is 0.7 times 0.15, which is 0.105, just like 15% of 700 is 105. Take that and use it to solve for y. y will be 0.2 minus x. 0.2 minus 0 0.105 is 0 0.095. And now we can solve for z. That'll be the final answer. z is going to be 1 minus the sum w plus x plus y. w plus x is 0.7. Just use that again. y we just found to be 0 0.095. 1 minus 0 0.795 is 0 0.205. And of the answers that are given in the sample exam problems, the one that's closest to that is 21%. And that is answer B. Okay, so that's the quick way to get the answer, the way I recommend doing it if you're taking actuarial exam one. But we do want to understand the bigger picture. We want to understand general formulas to solve harder problems. And they are coming. The harder problems are coming. Okay, this is a little harder than the other ones recently. So we want to um, understand notation and formulas as well. Let's bring some notation in here. W plus X that's the probability of M, right? 0.7. 70% insure more than one car. X plus Y, that's the probability of S. X plus Y, those are the people who insure a sports car. Can I label this thing with a probability symbol? Yes, but it's a new kind of probability symbol. This is the people who are known to insure more than one car, and we're wondering what is the chances that they insure a sports car of those people. Here's the standard notation for it. Um, it's the probability of insuring a sports car if it is given or known that they insure more than one car. This, you draw a vertical line in here. That vertical line is shorthand for given that. Or if it is known that. And this whole symbol, the whole thing, is called a conditional probability. And this concept of a conditional probability is kind of tricky, but it is really important. If you think in terms of areas, if you imagine probabilities in terms of areas in the diagram, the whole area of the whole diagram is 1. The area of M would be 0.7 because it's 70%. The area of x, which in this case would be 0 0.105 here, would be the value of the area of this region that would make it 15% of the area of the circle for m. Okay, And 0 0.105 divided by 0 0.7 is, again, 15%. Okay, So that's the new concept. Now let's think formulas here. The goal, again, is to solve for this thing z equals the probability of m prime, the, which is the, again, the complement of m, intersected with s prime. Again, the intersection symbol is what they have in common. It's kind of shorthand for and. 
That's what we want to find. And based on the fact that we know information about probabilities of these events without primes, it would be good to use the complement rule here. This would be 1 minus the probability of the complement of this event, which I could write like this. And when you see a lot of primes like that, you want to get rid of them. You need a De Morgan law. Like I talked about in video number four, what you can do is essentially bring the prime through. It's not a derivative. It's Sometimes you'll see people use a C for complement instead of a prime. It's the opposite event. It's what's outside. You can bring the prime through, and when you have M double prime, so to speak, that's the same as M. When you take the complement of the complement, you get the original setback. S double prime is S itself, and the intersection changes to a union. That's what one of De Morgan's laws says. Okay, And you can certainly check this out visually in terms of the set diagram, the Venn diagram here. All right. Now, I could think of the probability of M union S, M or S, in terms of this picture, and just call this probability W plus X plus Y, just like I did back here, and get the answer that way. That certainly could be done. But I, once again, want to emphasize some rules here. And the first thing, next thing I want to emphasize is the, is the general addition rule that we talked about in video number four as well. The probability in general of one event or another occurring is the probability of the first plus the probability of the second minus the probability of the intersection of them both occurring. Okay, you can start to plug numbers in here. This is the same as. 1 minus, in parentheses, the probability of M is 0.7, the probability of S is 0.2. What's the probability of the intersection? Let's go ahead and use an X there. This could lead to the answer, 0.1 plus X, and using X equals 0 0.105, we get 0 0.1 plus 0 0.105 to get 0 0.205, just like before. But there's one more rule I want to emphasize here. We could solve it another way using something called the general multiplication rule. This is the general addition rule going from here to here. The general multiplication rule tells us another way to think about the probability of an event and another occurring. You could think of it as being the probability of the first event times the conditional probability of the second event given that the first event has occurred. You also can switch around the rules of S and M, but we know this conditional probability up here is 0.15. Yeah, you could plug in the numbers to double check this. This is 0.7, this is 0.15. The product is our old friend here, 0 0.105. That is the value of X, just like I have right here. Yet another way to get the same, same answer, okay? So take a few, a few minutes to, to think about these things, to see that you can think about them any one of these ways to get the same answer. Let's go to Mathematica now. And it's a little smaller this time because um, the picture that we're going to see here is bigger. If you want to take a picture of the code, I'm about to run the code. And what the code is going to do is something similar to video four. Um, the focus is on the fact that I made a manipulate to allow me to change something. And what I'm allowing myself to change is the value of x. You know, the thing I want to find is z. Like you can see in the picture here, the probability of m prime and s prime. x is the probability of m and s. It's the intersection here. And initially here, you can see the value of x is set to 0 0.05. That's not the answer for x. But the mathematical manipulate allows me to change it. And what I'm really after for the answer, of course, is the value of z, but to get there, I need the value of x that makes the area between the red and the blue lines here on the left 15% of the total area of the red rectangle here. The black box is the entire Venn diagram. The red rectangle is the event m that they insure more than one car. The blue rectangle over here is the event s that they insure in a sports car. x means they insure more than one car and a sports car. That's the intersection of the two. Over here, that's M prime intersect S prime. That's They ensure exactly one car, and it's not a sports car. That was the answer that we're after. Again, I'm changing the value of X here. The true answer is 0 0.105 for X, meaning the answer for Z ends up being 0 0.205. That's the area of this thing. 
But again, the key conceptual point here is to understand is for the answer for, for the value of x, 0 0.105, the area of this thin rectangle here is 15% of the total area of the red rectangle. These graphs over here are just emphasizing the key quantities. The answer we're after is 0.1 plus x, that's the orange graph. You can see the second coordinate of this point is 0 0.205 when x is 0 0.105. And the purple graph here is the value of the conditional probability. When x is 0 0.105, this value is 15%, 0 0.15, okay? The x is 0 0.105 for the answer, making z, again, 0 0.205, but this diagram allows you to emphasize all these quantities in relationship to each other, and I hope it's enlightening.